I'm actually going to be introducing our second presenter. Uh, his name is Peter Schultz. Um, Peter Schultz is actually the editor of The Winning Secret and the president of Cash Flow Heaven Publishing. Uh, Peter's been showing self-directed investors how to trade successfully since 1996, and this is a nationally known speaker on options trading, the author of Passage to Freedom. Uh, the Options Success Trading Package, the Winning Secret Trading Package, as well as the Explosive Profits Package and the Greatest Option Strategies on Earth. Uh, he's also written several important short reports on innovative options techniques and is a popular guest on radio and television talk shows pertaining uh, to training in financial markets. Uh, he's fascinated by the idea of asset-produced monthly income. Uh, Peter's founded Cashflow Heaven Publishing in 1999 and helped his subscribers uh, obtain a better lifestyle through trading and investing strategies designed to produce exceptional monthly returns. Uh, Peter graduated in 1982 from Southern Oregon University with a Bachelor of Science degree in Business with Marketing and Finance concentrations. Uh, he's happily married with three children and makes his home in Ashland, Oregon, um, on the eastern shores of Bear Creek, somewhere north of Siskiyou Pass. Um, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce our second presenter of the day, Peter Schultz. Listen, um, thank you, Chris, so much for the introduction, and we're starting a couple of minutes late here, so I just want to let you know that we've got a lot of really good information to cover. Um, you're gonna, my name is Peter Schultz, just like Chris told you. Um, I founded a company called Cashflow Heaven Publishing, and we produce trading letters and education to help people in, increase their cash flow, and we have several different ways to do that, and I'm going to talk to you today about my absolute favorite. And that's a service that we offer called the winningsecret.com. And um, uh, the winning secret really is, and you're going to see why here in a minute. And if you were kind of fascinated with the idea of options, but you're a little bit afraid of them, um, I think you're just going to love this presentation. And if you're already an options trader and you're having some kind of mixed success and you kind of feel sometimes like you're taking one step forward and two steps backwards, I also think you're going to get a heck of a lot out of this presentation. So. I, I just we just have a ton of information to cover. I think you're going to find it super super inspiring, and um, I think you're going to have a whole new hope for your future um, after watching this. So get a pen and paper. You're going to want to take some notes here, and just let's get started. Let's get rolling. Also, I really want to answer your questions. Um, real very much into that, um, and but I'm, I've got a lot to go through. So I think what we're going to do is save the questions till the end. And you know, keep your question. If I've got a few minutes at the end there, I want to I want to get your questions answered. So, if we're going to retire on thirteen thousand per month uh, within five years or less, and we're going to do that tax free, we need a really good plan. And thirteen thousand per month is a pretty tall order. So, how are we going to go about doing that? So, let's just very quickly go over what the professional financial financial advisors say we need now. I know we're all kind of traders here, so you probably have some really aggressive ways that you trade or that you've gotten into. So what I want to do here is kind of move ourselves over to start starting to talk about your retirement money. I mean, the kind of money that you absolutely need to have there when you need it. So I think it's really fun to take a certain percentage of your account, maybe 10, 15, maybe even 20% of your account and trade it with the really aggressive strategies. But what do you do with the 80% that you absolutely have to have available and ready for you when, when you need it? So if you go in and talk to a professional financial, financial advisor, it can be kind of a sobering meeting if you've ever sat down with your spouse and done that. So $13,000 per month, if you multiply that by 12 months, that's $156,000 a year. So you know, that'll provide a pretty comfortable retirement in most parts of the country. And, um, and you know, it can be more than that, it can be less than that, but we're just using that figure. If, if you need less, you know, you can get there a lot quicker. If you need more, I'll sh absolutely show you how you can reasonably expect to get there. But if you sit down and talk to a financial advisor and, and, and they tell you, well, you're going to need some bonds, you're going to be want to be in some U.S. government bonds, well, the 10-year bond right now is yielding 2.7%. So if you want to bring in $156,000 a year, you're going to need $5,777,777. Now, that's pushing $6 million. If you've got that set aside and that's what you've got saved up for retirement, more power to you. My hat's off to you. Congratulations. You've done really well. Uh, not everybody is in that position. So, And even if you are, even if you do have that kind of money, I, I think you might be interested in getting 
a lot better returns on your money, especially if you can do it safely with a very high expectation of winning. So let's just say you jump up to uh, some higher yield dividend stocks, maybe some master limited partnerships, some royalty income trusts, and now you're getting 5%. You're still going to need over $3 million to generate your $156,000 a year. So obviously we need to get substantially better than conventional returns. So all I'm saying is we can do a lot better. And once again, the approach that we're going to take here is, is just to really get over on the safe side of things so you feel really good about this and really comfortable. So we need to do it safely. And you have to have confidence that you're going to get those kind of returns. And, and more importantly, you're going to preserve your capital. So you're not going to blow up your account, and it's, the money's going to be there for you when you need it. So in the world of investments, there's always uncertainty. So our plan has to have a high mathematical probability of success. So how does 85% to 90% sound? If every trade that you went into had an 85 to 90% probability of success, would you feel pretty good about that trade? And beyond that, the 10 or 15% uh, percent of your trades that don't work out or become threatened, would it be nice to have some really good strategies for improving those trades, breaking even on them, or maybe even making a profit? So in thinking about all the investing you've ever done or the trading you've done, would 85 to 90% probability of winning be at the high end of your probability? And you know, it's so interesting to listen to trading strategies where they get out there and they go, you know, we've done the research on this and you're going to lose on seven or eight out of every 10 trades, but the two or three that you make money on, you're going to make really good money. And I'm thinking, you know, that sounds good, but what if you lose on 10 out of 10? You know, getting into the really risky stuff can be tough. You have to have really good money management, and you have to kind of have iron, ironclad discipline. So for most of us out here, I mean, if you're a really great trader, and you're day trading, and you're making a fortune, once again, um, you know, that's great, and, and I, I give you all the respect and honor that, that comes with that. But most of us truly need some kind of an edge. We need something that is really comfortable for us that we have a high degree of confidence in and we just feel good about. And, and what you'll see here is, is on every one of these trades you make, you're going to have an edge going into the trade. So we're basing our expectation of winning on the Black-Scholes pricing model. And that's the, the original options pricing model that made the options market possible in the first place. So the gentlemen, the mathematicians that created this won the Nobel Prize for Economics in 1997. Now, they didn't come up with the formula in 1997. They came up with it in 1973, which is no coincidence. Um, their formula is what made the modern options market possible. They came up with a formula that enabled a market in options where the buy side was fair, the sell side was fair, and we could actually have a market. And so the, the, the actual options market was formed that we trade in today was formed fairly recently, just back in 1973. Interestingly enough, they didn't even trade puts in the beginning. It was just calls until about 1978, and they added in puts. So a lot of what we take for granted now, a lot of the things that we trade are actually not that old. And it's this Black-Scholes pricing formula that made this possible. Well, what's really cool, what I tell people about the, the Black-Scholes pricing model is, you don't have to know all the math. You don't need to be able to calculate this thing and be some genius math professor to make money with this formula. And we're going to take advantage of it right here. And by the end of the presentation, you're going to know how to put this formula totally on your side. And you don't need to know the math. You don't have to be able to even understand it. I, the way, what I tell people I think is kind of cute is, is that you don't need to know all the internal workings of the, uh, the internal combustion engine to drive your car to the bank. You know, you just need to know where the key goes, where the gas is, and where the brakes are to be able to keep that thing on the road. And you can drive your car down to the bank, and it's the same thing with this. But I just wanted to let you know that we've got some really sophisticated math, some really powerful math on our side. So we're using a strategy that takes advantage of the Black-Scholes pricing model and this strategy is based on selling options instead of buying them. So, you know, just to let you know a little bit more about my story is I started trading options in 1996, and um, 
you know, I was a lot younger back then, like the rest of us were, and what attracted me the, to trading options is I'm just going to make a fortune overnight, you know, and I learned all about it, and I just thought, you know, my biggest challenge in life is going to be picking out what color my Mercedes Benz is going to be. And, you know, I'm laying awake at night just dreaming about all the money that I'm going to make. And, you know, a funny thing happens when you start trading options. Sometimes things don't work out the way you think they're going to. And sometimes, um, you know, like the comedians like to say, a funny thing happens on the way to the bank. Um, stocks zig when you think they're going to zag. And most of the people that get into trading options, and I was no exception, get into buying options. So they want to buy some call option for a dollar or two dollars and watch that thing blast up to ten or fifteen dollars, you know, overnight on some great earnings announcement. And most people approach the options market like playing the lottery. And you know, it, options have this just incredible magnetic attraction to people. And if you take a look at the options volume, what's what's being traded is is the options volume breaks records every single year. It gets to be more and more and more. And there's absolutely no shortage of people that want to get in and speculate by buying options. And I still buy options sometimes. I mean, if there's a really good trade set up or, you know, if I can get in on, a, on buying a strangle on a stock that's going to announce earnings and I can make money in either direction, you know, that's, that's fun to do sometimes. But the vast majority of my options, a few years ago, I switched over to selling, and I am so glad I did. And if you take a look at the people that stay in the options market for years and years and years and just keep pulling money out of the market over and over and over every month, invariably, in almost every case, those are option sellers. So if you've never really considered being an option seller, I, I hope this presentation really kind of changes your mind around a little bit. And, um, and I'm just absolutely convinced. For, for most of us out here that don't want to be glued to a computer screen and be Johnny on the spot with your buys and sells and have to do everything perfectly, selling options really is the way to go. And the reason it's important to sell options instead of buying them is you have a much, a much better chance of winning. If you've ever bought an option that expired worthless, have you ever wondered where all that money goes? So, you know, back in the day when I was making all these trades and I'd have just enough winners, you know, to keep me in the game, but I was losing way more money than I was making. And, you know, sometimes I'd have a trade blow up and, you know, I just lost this ton of money. I'm, I'm going, gosh, darn it, you know, what happened to that money? Did it just get destroyed? You know, did the market maker down on the floor, did he get all my money? Well, no, they just get the difference between the bid-ask spread. Well, how about my broker? You know, did my broker get all my lost money? You know, what happened to it? No, the broker just makes a little commission. Finally one day, you know, you guys are probably a lot quicker than I am, but finally one day this big light bulb goes on over my head, and I go, oh my gosh, every penny, every dollar that I ever lost buying options went to the options seller. Somebody out there is collecting this huge pile of money, and believe me, it is huge. It's estimated that just this year alone, over one trillion $116 billion worth of options will be traded. So we're going to have another record year here in 2014. And, and 2013 was a record year. Here's what's interesting. It's also estimated that over 85% of those options will expire worthless. So 85% of the total options volume traded this year comes to approximately $949 billion worth of expiring premium. So ask yourself, we're talking about $949 billion, <laughs> pretty big pile of money. So ask yourself, how much of that $949 billion do you need to retire? And I suspect it's a pretty thin slice. I mean, 1%, you'd be living like a king. You know, a fraction of a percent, you'd be on a, a beach anywhere in the world. You know, how much do you really need a month, 5,000, 10,000? We're going to talk about very realistically getting 13000 a month from money that you already have or are already setting aside. So a tremendous amount of options premium expires every month, and we only need to get our hands on a small percentage of that, and we will do very, very well. So for the purpose of this webinar, we're targeting 13000 per month. But as you'll soon see, that amount can be just the beginning. And the strategy we'll use is called selling credit spreads. Now, 
there are many ways to sell options. Um, some of you are familiar with covered calls. This is where maybe you own a stock for $18 and you sell a $20 call on it and you bring in a little bit of income. My problem with that is the $18 or $30 or $50 you have to spend to buy the stock. It ties up a lot of your capital and we can do just as well by doing credit spreads with a, using a lot less money. Another way to sell options is to sell them naked. So to sell naked calls or naked puts. And I like to tell everybody, um, you know, you just don't want to go naked down Wall Street. You know, you can lose more than your dignity. And, and that's so true when, when the stock goes against you because you have no protection. So with credit spreads, here's what we're going to do. And this, is, this has become absolutely my favorite strategy. And one of the really cool things about selling credit spreads is you start getting into this club where you talk to other people, you know, I've got this privilege of, of talking to other people all around the country and all around the world that are doing this, and it's, it's one of those things in the, in the investing business or the trading business that's like the best kept secret on the planet. People are quietly doing this over and over and over, and the people that I see do it tend to be bright. They tend to really understand numbers. So my cousin out in Chicago is doing this. He supplements his income hugely. Um, and he's a retired chemist. I've got engineers, you know, accountants. People that understand numbers and probabilities absolutely love the strategy, and you're going to see why. So what is a credit spread? What is it? What are we talking about here? A credit spread is simply selling an option and then buying another option to hedge. And I'm gonna, if, if you're not familiar with that, or it sounds kind of confusing, I'm going to show you a, a really simple picture of how that works so you can sort of understand it and see what we're doing here. So the option we're selling is more valuable than the one we're buying, so it creates a credit in our account. And, and people say, well, what's a credit? You know, well, the credit is money. The cash hits your account, that's money you can use to spend, to reinvest, to help pay your mortgage, to go on a trip, to see your grandkids, whatever it is you want to do. We can generate this money, and you know what's kind of exciting? If you have a little bit of an imagination and you like to travel, What's really cool is that you can generate this money from anywhere in the world that you can find an internet connection. So back um, about 10 years ago, this, this idea fascinated me so much. Um, we, I would go on vacation every August and travel all around the national parks in the western United States, and I would trade with my laptop. I'd figure out how to get an internet connection. It was a lot tougher back then. But I'd trade for my laptop on picnic tables in the Redwoods and, and just all over the place and get in touch with my subscribers, and I'd tell them to all, all do the same thing. And I got the coolest emails from people. You know, they'd, they'd be traveling around in their RV, they'd be camping, they'd be having fun, they'd stop at some library in some little town and, you know, bring in $500, $1,000 and just cackle at the top of their lungs like they were getting away with something because they were and you know, go on their merry way. And then, then I started traveling internationally. So I've, I've created these, these credits um, from a little coffee shop on the corner of a street in Amsterdam and um, you know, even over in India, you know, finding a little, a little cyber cafe somewhere. And there, you know, nowadays, there's getting to be internet access everywhere. So, so just start getting your imagination going a little bit. You know, you'll never have to suffer an ice cold winter in the Northland again. You know, you can go south and, and actually have a way to bring in some good money. So before we can get there, let's talk about what a credit spread is. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to grab my little pen so I can highlight some things. So what we've got here, this is a really good example, and this is a trade I just put on a week and a half ago. So this is a CMG. This is Chipotle Mexican Grill and you've probably eaten at the restaurants or heard about them. And the stock kind of took a dive here um, along with the stock market. In late January, the stock market was really going down, and it dragged a lot of good stocks down with it. But what happened is Chipotle, right here at the very end of January, announced earnings. Earnings were way better than expected, and the, the growth of the company was really good. And we have this huge gap, so it gaps all the way up to here. Um, it retraced some of that gap, it went down, it went up, and it kind of looked to me like it was trading in a, you know, sort of a channel here. Um, you know, once the earnings had come out, you know, people kind of knew what the story was, and the stock's just kind of going along sideways. Well, what's really cool about this is because of this gap and because of the price of the stock, it's got some pretty rich premiums on it. So what we do is the whole idea, the whole point of the game here is to sell a spread 
where the stock is not going to go in the time that you have left. So what I sold was the, and, and this is one that we did for the subscribers, this is right on the newsletter, it's one of our typical trades here, is we sold the February 21st expiration. So we know that come heck or high water, um, this trade is going to expire on the 21st of uh, this month, February, which is actually yesterday. So, um, so, you know, a lot of people don't know when to get out of a trade. You know, that's one of the biggest challenges traders have. Well, this is kind of cool because there's already a finish line for you. So here's when we did the trade back here about a week and a half ago, and we sold the 515 put for a dollar 55. We bought the 510 put for a dollar five, and that created a 50 cent per share credit in our account. So if you did one contract, if you did, which is 100 shares, you know, $50 hit your account. If you did 10 contracts, which is kind of typical, that's a lot of what people do, $500 hits your account. So, you know, people talk about making $500 a day in the market. Well, here's our, our $500. Now, if you have a bigger account, you're a little bit more ambitious, you know, maybe you do 100 contracts and that's $5,000 hits your account. But, so, you know, you can just move this decimal point, but let's take, take a look at our rate of return. So, the most you can lose here, so what you're doing when you sell a put is you're selling somebody um, the right to put you the stock at 515. Well, if you just did that, if that's all you did is sold that, um, you would have a liability all the way down to zero on the stock because if the stock dropped down to $400 or whatever and somebody made you buy it at 515, that's a pretty big liability. So to limit that liability, to hedge our risk, our little insurance is to buy this lower put here at 510. So once we do that, our maximum risk on this trade is $5 just the difference between the strikes, between 515 and 510. That's all we can lose. And we took in a 50 cent credit. So instead of being able to lose $5, now all we can lose is $4.50. So that's our risk. Um, it's kind of a different backward way to look at it, but that's like our investment. That's the amount that we could risk on this particular trade. So if we can make a 50 cent credit on a $4.50 investment, that's 11 percent return and it's for just a week and a half of time that is pretty phenomenal especially when you think about people making five percent per year on their dividend stocks well here's what's really cool about about credit spreads is if you did one down below you know sometimes you don't want to do one in either direction sometimes you just want to do one in the opposite direction that the stock is going but you know if Chipotle if we kind of determine it's kind of in a range and it's kind of stuck here and it's kind of trading sideways could we also go up here on the upside and sell a spread and maybe double our our returns well absolutely we can and that's exactly what we did so we sold the 570 call for 95 cents, we bought the 575 call for 40 cents, so that's a difference of 40, 55 cents. So here's what we do, is we take our first credit, the one that we got down here, and you know, you can do these at the same time. This is called a condor or an iron condor. So our first credit we got on the put spread is 50 cents. Now we add that to the call spread up on top there, and we get 55 cents. And so that equals a dollar ten in credit. That's a pretty healthy credit. Now here's what's really cool. When I, you know, things have gotten so much better for us options traders. So back in the beginning, back in the day when I first started started trading options, if you put on these two spreads, they would make you hold a five dollar margin in your account for your put spread and a five dollar margin in your account for your call spread. Well, that's a total of ten dollars. Well, what the brokers finally acknowledged about 10 years ago, and all of us options traders have been screaming at them for years, is, listen, it doesn't matter what this stock does. If it goes up, down, or sideways, it cannot close above your call spread and below your put spread at the same time at expiration. It's going to be somewhere, but it can't be in two places at once. And the brokers finally acknowledged that. So what they said is, is okay, if, if you have a number of contracts on the same expiration date, and that's what we recommend, is we're, we're only going to set aside margin for one side or the other. So it's the same $5. So 
So now we've got a dollar ten divided by what could we possibly lose? Well, five dollars, dollar ten. Actually, what is that? Fifty by fifty-five is a dollar five. See, you don't have to be a great mathematician. So, a dollar five is our credit, and track that from five dollars, and we get three dollars and ninety-five cents. And that is our maximum potential loss. The 395. So you divide these two and you get a 20. This is where things start getting pretty exciting. A 26.5% return. And it was about a week and a half, but you got a weekend in there, and the weekend is just dead time. So it's for just eight trading days of time. That's it. That's all we're in this trade. And we had a huge probability of winning on this trade. This particular trade, I mean, it was close to 90% probability of winning, 26.5% in just eight trading days of time. You know, once again, I want imagination going a little bit. Imagine if you're sort of doing this every month or every two weeks. Can you imagine? And you're winning on 80 to 90% of your trades. Imagine what your account is building up to. Imagine what the compounding is doing. So it's one thing to create spreads, but how do we know that our chances of winning are 85 to 90 percent or better? How do we know that? Well, here's a really cool thing: is the neat thing about the options is based on a mathematical formula. So whenever we sell an option, we can instantly see what the odds are that will expire worthless. You know, you could do this calculation if you happen to be a mathematician and that's your your fun recreation. I don't understand these numbers. I probably very few of us do. It'd be kind of nice to have a short figure out your probabilities. And Thinkorswim, which I think is the best brokerage around for trading options, they've got some wonderful tools. And you can even negotiate with them a little bit on commissions, which I'll show you how to do that here towards the end of the presentation. But when you get into your Thinkorswim platform, here's what it looks like. And one of the you can do is they've got layouts. So you can get you can put all kinds of things up here in your columns just by clicking this corner down here. And what I recommend everybody select is implicability, probability, and out of the money, and the delta. So if you can see down here, here's what we sold on, and this is CMG. You can see the stock right up here. And we sold the 515 puts, and we bought the 510 puts to hedge. So what is the probability that your 515 put is going to be overrun or not overrun? So it's got a 92.18% of experience expiring out of money. And when it expires out of the money, that's when we make our, our money. So it's kind of like a game of tag. You're trying to sell an, um, an option that's never going to get touched by the underlying. And the way that you do that is you sell a relatively short amount of time and you sell pretty as far out of the money as you can and still get a decent credit. And those are, those are sometimes tough stocks to find. So I really spend a lot of time looking for these trades and I go through a ton of stocks. I've even got scanners that work for me, and even then I've got to get in and, and take a look and analyze each stock and make sure there isn't a, a volatility event coming up like earnings, make sure that the stock is to the best of our ability, try and make it contained within our parameters. But you know, just right here, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do, and there's a lot to this, but we're just looking at a probability based on the Black-Scholes model right here. So if we go down to our calls, so we, got the, we sold the 570 calls, we bought the 575 calls to hedge. And on this one, the call that we sold has an 89.93% probability of expiring worthless. So that's about a 90% probability of expiring out of the money. And if you had a 90% chance of winning on every trade, and you could make this kind of money, these kind of returns, which are only possible since the changes that they made to weekly options in the spring of 2012. And I'll tell you what those are here in a moment. But all of this is relatively recent. So credit spreads have been around for a long time. I used to trade them heavily back in 2003 for a while. They've just gotten better and better. Um, one of the really cool things is the narrowing of the bid-ask spreads. That's really good. But, but what I want to show you right here is this approximately 90% probability of winning. On our aggressive trades, we go about 85%. On our my retirement trades, what we're talking about here is I like to be up around 90%. This is a really quick and easy way where you can, you can see that. You can verify that for yourself. Now, these probabilities really do play out over the long run, which makes for great odds. Plus, there are adjustments we can make to make trades even better when they go against us, so to try and fix things. 
So I don't want you to worry about when a trade goes against you because there's always things we can do. In fact, I know it sounds kind of crazy, but I actually welcome the occasional trade that needs to be adjusted because it says two things. Number one, we're selling close enough to the underlying to have to adjust once in a while. We have to adjust our trades. Uh, you know, if we do eight trades a month, which is, which is what I recommend in the service, we do two trades come out every Tuesday evening. So about eight trades a month, we usually have to adjust at least one or two of those. And I don't mind. It's actually kind of a cool thing to do. And what it means is we're selling close enough to the underlying to have to adjust once in a while. And selling close means we're bringing in, you know, like the maximum amount of money that we can. We want to get close enough to the monster to make really good money, but not close enough to get touched. And when it does look like the thing's chasing us and it might catch us, we just roll right out of the way. So we have the means, number two is we have the means to adjust our way out of almost any situation. And that makes you feel a lot more powerful and confident in what you're doing. Now, I, I don't mean to say that you can't lose. Obviously, you can. But with this style of trading, not only are the odds stacked in your favor in the beginning, but there's maneuvers and things that you can do to slip these punches and get out of the way of this big heavyweight but slow fighter and roll and dodge and weave. And at the very least, you can actually almost always reduce what you could potentially lose. And, and a lot of times, I mean, we had a a terrible trade that went against us on Visa when the market you know, went straight up about a, a week and a half or so ago. And we rolled out of that one and we ended up breaking even. And sometimes breaking even is a victory. But keep in mind you only have to do these on a small percentage of your trades. The rest of your trades just expire worthless. It's just kind of a big yawn going into expiration. And you know, that's really what we want. That's our goal. So let me just show you one quick adjustment here. Adjusting your spreads means to close a spread that is being threatened and then open a new spread to bring in more money. And all it takes is a few mouse clicks. So this is not, this is not real tough. And obviously in the service I tell people exactly what to do. But here's a great example. So this was on the SPY. Great thing to trade. And here it is. It's kind of going sideways. It's kind of in a channel. And we figure it's just going to keep doing that. And we sell a call spread up here, bring in some nice premium and we sell a put spread down here. Sometimes the market is full of surprises and the SPY crashes right after we sell our spread. So this is every spread trader's nightmare. So oh my gosh, what do you do? And here the stock's going down and it looks like it's gonna overrun our spread and what do we do? Well, first of all, what I wanna let you know is we never, ever let a stock or an index overrun our spread. At the very least, we close our position when the sold strike is touched. A lot of the time nowadays, especially, we actually sell it before then. So in this case, you would, you, would, you would close this spread so you get rid of it. So once you close the spread, it removes all further liability in the trade, but it does cost you some pretty good money to close it. So at that point, the moment you close the spread, you're kind of in a losing position. So you want to do something to bring in more money to offset that. So you sell another call spread. You leave this call spread in place to just expire worthless. Or if it's just a couple of pennies, you can close it and get rid of it. And it gets, gets rid of the margin requirement. So you open up a new spread, a new call spread that's still well away from the underline but brings in some pretty good money. And then you go way down below here and you open up a new put spread. And typically what this will do is this spread and this spread will completely offset the cost to close this spread. Um, sometimes you'll even make money on the deal. And this is with, in this situation, this is with the same expiration. Um, you can also sell a further out expiration. So there's a lot of different ways to adjust. And in my educational materials, I spend a lot of time on showing people how to adjust. It's like counter moves. So most of the time, like I say, 80 to 90% of the time, these things just expire worthless. But when, you know, this is the stock market and it's crazy and it dances all over the place, very hard to predict. When one of your spreads is threatened, I just want to let you know is there is things that we can do. And there's some, actually some really cool things that we can do. So you don't have to worry about it. So being able to adjust our positions and having the probabilities on our side is critical for the success of our plan, along with good chart reading and looking forward to the fundamentals driving the market. But we want more than theory. We want a proven plan, a proven path to follow. So has anybody actually done this with good success? And so, yes, we have. So this particular service, and I've been in business since 99, but this one I really fell in love with in 2010. And you just, I gotta tell you, you're gonna really enjoy winning most of the time. And 
if you've gotten to the point with your trading where you have a little bit of trepidation when you when you place a trade and you're going, gosh, I hope this thing doesn't blow up, I hope it doesn't reverse, I hope I don't lose money, I think this is going to be like an absolute breath of fresh air. Um, it's just so nice to get into trades knowing that you have just this, this huge chance of winning right off the bat. So we've done really well. I'm really proud of our track record. We post it for the public to see. We've got every month posted. You can go to the website at thewinningsecret.com. You can see our track record. I post the losers. Um, I post the winners. I show everybody what we did. Very proud of it. But that's us. That's me speaking. Of course we're going to try and you know promote what we do, you know, we're very proud of it, but has anyone, anyone else done this? And what I like to do is, is go out and reach out to our subscribers and people that have been doing this before they ran into us and say, you know, how do you do? So uh, my cousin out in Chicago, he's a retired chemist, he does really well. His wife was super skeptical about him trading options in the first place, like, you know, wives are kind of there to, to sort of keep us in check a little bit sometimes. And he said, well, honey, how would it be if I put an extra thousand dollars a month in your purse? How would that work for you? And she was pretty skeptical, but she said, you know, well, that's fine if you could do that. Well, that's actually what he's done, and uh, she loves what he does now. Um, she loves it. Um, I've, got a, I've got another guy named Bob Malota out there. I just love this guy. He's retired. He's down in Florida. He always sends me his track record every year for the whole year. I just love Bob. And he had one year just not too long ago. He had 28 trades he showed and didn't have a single losing trade. And in a lot of times he'll have one losing trade. So, you know, I really love getting these stories, but is there anybody else out there that has done this that you could check out on your own independently without me telling you about it? And there actually is. I stumbled across this gal. I think she's so phenomenal. She has such an incredible story. And you have to sort of think, well, you know, she can do it. And if some of these, these retired guys out there are doing it, could, could I do it? So let me introduce you to a gal named Karen. So there's a woman named Karen. Maybe you know about her already. I just get a huge kick out of her and her story. She's just really low-key. She's really modest. So there's a woman named Karen that started out trading 100000 of her own money. And this is back in about 2002. And she was going to start a bagel shop with a girlfriend. And her girlfriend talked her into, hey, instead of starting a bagel shop, why don't we go, go to this options seminar and, and see if we can learn something. So she used, she traded a lot of different strategies and lost money at most of them. And she finally found this one, this one that we're talking about right now. And using this exact strategy, um, and she even used the Thinkorswim platform to do it. And she built her 100000 up to an incredible amount of money. She was so successful, wealthy individuals and institutions started giving her money to manage. And eventually she was managing $95 million dollars. And over the course of three years, she made $41 million using this strategy, and she's still trading today. So I have to throw in one caveat here. At one point, she had so much money, such a huge amount of money that she was managing. When you do that, sometimes you can get special margin um, requirements, and she doesn't buy the hedge anymore. So she just does strangle. So she'll sell a way out of the money put. She'll sell a way out of the money call, and she doesn't hedge it because she's got so much other money set aside. I don't recommend that for anybody but perhaps a professional because it just gobbles up too much of the margin requirements in your account, and it's actually kind of risky. So she does this, but she has five professional traders now that are watching this at all times. But what, what I want you to look at, and she started off doing exactly what we're doing, and we're just going to stick with that. I like having that hedge, I like having that protection. But there's a YouTube video where Karen is interviewed by Tom Sosnoff, who's one of the founders of Thinkorswim. And to find that video, just Google Karen Super Trader Tasty Trade. And the first video is 24 minutes and talks about her making 41 million. <laughs> that just boggles my mind. And the second is 51 minutes and talks about making 105 million over a longer period of time. And you're, you're gonna, they're both pretty inspirational. You're going to come away inspired from both of these. So if you just want to write that down, that's something that you can check out. She's fun to listen to, and she's, like I said, real level-headed, good with numbers, loves the probabilities of this strategy. So I want to give you something that you can kind of just verify on your own, you know, check out. Um, but so Karen talks about selling about 56 days of time for optimal returns. 
but that was before they made the changes in 2012 to weekly options. So what they did, what those changes are, is that when weeklies first were introduced, like back in 2007 or so, people got really excited about them, but here's what, what would happen, is they would introduce the weeklies on a Thursday, and they would expire the following Friday. So you'd, you could only be in a trade for maybe eight days, and, and the, the option wasn't even created until that Thursday. So what they did in 2012, the spring of 2012, is they said, listen, if we're going to have weeklies, people should be able to choose their time frame. So on the things, not all stocks have weeklies, just a, you know, just a few of them, um, and getting to be more and more, which is pretty cool. But what they'll do is, is a lot of the time they'll have four weeks out there for you to, um, to pick from. So what's really cool about this is you can pick your spot on the time decay curve. So here's the time decay curve. This shows how an option, the time value of an option decays. And the most important thing that you can see here is that options do not, time does not decay in a straight line. So out here from three to four months. So this is four months out right here. Four months of time. You can see the time decay curve is fairly flat. So this is three months of time. So this is 60 days to 90 days. And you can see it starts to steepen up just a little bit. Now, this is where Karen likes to sell. She likes to sell just into that second month out. This is her favorite spot. And I think she does that because it's at a fairly flat spot, but it starts to steepen up the closer you get to being front month. But here's what's always fascinated me about a time decay curve. So this is the second month out. Here's what's fascinating about a time decay curve. Once you get into that front month, time decays so rapidly. And that is our edge. That's what we're doing is we're selling time that we're hoping will expire and go to zero. And when it does, we get, you know, all of that takes up permanent resonance in our account. So the sweet spot that I found is we sell about a week and a half to two and a half weeks of time. We sell on this really steep part of the time decay curve. This is front month, this is the last month before it decays, and this has allowed us to make a huge amount of money, and you're just really here close to the finish line. So what you're selling very quickly, it's like, it's like holding an ice cream cone on a super hot day, is you, <laughs> you better get rid of that ice cream quick because it is disappearing, it's melting. And these changes that they made in the spring of 2012 have allowed us to do this and really get some phenomenal returns for a very short amount of time. So we're taking what Karen has done as the inspiration for a new program designed to get anyone who follows it retired within five years. So these trades will be more conservative than our usual spread trades because we're willing to accept lower returns, slightly lower, for a higher probability of winning. So our typical spreads yield anywhere from 15 to 30 for as much as 30% per month. But what if we went for much more safety and targeted just 10 to 20% per month? And 10 to 20% per month is huge. You get out a, a compound interest calculator, see what your money does at just 10% a month, and it will blow your mind. But on these retirement trades, you know, a lot of the time we're actually getting, well, most of the time we're actually getting closer up to 20%. So over the past three months, we've actually been averaging closer to 20% on our retirement trades, but we have to factor in occasional losses, commissions, and the fact that we set aside money for buybacks and rollouts. So that's money, this is cash you need to have set aside to, you know, to roll out those trades and repair trades that, that go against you. But here's the kicker. Because we're selling a much shorter amount of time, we're averaging two weeks per trade instead of a month. So we're actually turning our money a lot faster. So if we're typically on our retirement trades getting 20%, I want you to think about it. Because whenever I watch these presentations and I think about me, I think, well, you know, maybe the expert there is getting 20%, or maybe they get that on the service, but I'm not going to get that. You know, I have to subtract out commissions. I have to subtract out the occasional losing trade. Um, I'm, I'm not trading my whole account because I have cash set aside. What can we reasonably expect to be making? So, you know, if we subtracted out 5%, could we be making 15% a month? You know, is that reasonable? Yeah, I think we could. Let's say we have some losing trades and we have to close out of some things. How about 10%? Can we do 10%? Yes. Even with all the volatility in the market, we can reasonably expect to make 10%. But for the purposes of this presentation, I want to get our expectations really, really low. I want to bring them down to an area where just without a shadow of a doubt you feel like that, that you could do. So 
keep in mind we're churning our money every two weeks. So we're getting about 20% every two weeks. That's, that's like 40% a month or more when you compound it. Let's forget about all of that and let's bring it down to just talking about 5% per month. Is this something that you could do at 5% per month? Well, let's just take a look at that and see what that turns out to. Getting 5% a month is still very impressive, especially when that money is compounded. So if we're going to really build up that account, we want to have as much of our money working for us as possible. In other words, we want to compound our returns in a tax-free environment to get all of our money working all of the time. Plus, wouldn't it be nice to be able to take that money out tax-free when it's time to live off of it in retirement? Well, of course it would. You know, taxes are tough. Taxes really make an impact on your income, as you know, especially if you've done well. So we're going to put our money in a special account that can build the infinity without having to pay any taxes on the profits ever. And this is kind of mind-blowing. You know, people are always talking about what Congress is doing to us and, you know, these terrible laws. And if you make a dollar, they try and take 90 cents. And, you know, it can be pretty rough out there. Well, Congress did us a huge favor many years ago when they created a special account called a Roth IRA. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but I do want to tell you what a Roth is and what it's all about. So unlike a regular IRA, the, the contributions are not tax deductible right off the bat, but the buildup is. So um, up to the age of 50, you can contribute 5,500 a year, and over the age of 50, you can contribute 6,500 a year. Direct contributions, this is huge, direct contributions to a Roth may be withdrawn tax-free at any time. There's no penalty for taking out your money, the money that you already put in there. And here's the biggest thing. Earnings, any buildup, any profits can be withdrawn tax-free and penalty-free after the age of 59 and a half. Bunch of other really cool things. I really suggest you look into it. They do not increase your adjusted gross income, so these earnings do not increase your tax bracket. You could be making a million dollars a year off of your Roth, and it doesn't increase your tax bracket. I find that absolutely phenomenal. Um, there's all these other really cool aspects of it. They don't, uh, um, they don't affect your, your, you know, your eligibility for Social Security. They do have cutoffs, though. For a single filer, you can make up to 110000 and still qualify for a, a full contribution. After that, it starts getting reduced and then eventually eliminated. And for joint filers, uh, you can make up to 173000 So um, the good news is if you're making a lot more than that, you, know, you might not need that advantage. But for, for the vast majority of people, seriously look into a Roth. Well, the cool thing is, you know, well, the amazing thing is, is, is you can build up as much wealth in this account as you want as long as the distributions are taken after the age of 59 and a half. The money you take is completely tax-free. So that's really, really cool. Um, so here's, here, I want to get into what we can make here, but here's what's cool is if you let Thinkorswim or any broker, options broker, know that you've got some options trading experience and you kind of know what you're doing and you're comfortable with this, they will allow you to trade this strategy right here, selling credit spreads in a Roth IRA. And you can put $6,500 if you're over the age of 50 into the account every year. If you're under the age of 50, fantastic. You have that many more years to compound it. So if we're just averaging a 5% monthly return and we're only using the money we can put into a Roth, what kind of account can we build up in five years? Well, the maximum we can put into a Roth is 6,500 per year. So if we put just that amount into the account every year for five years and got 5% per month trading this strategy, just 5%. Now, keep in mind, we've been doing better than that in the real world. Well, let's just say, you know, this is the best you can do is 5%. So if you got just 5% per month trading this strategy, how much would you end up with? Now, that's the kind of question that really gets my imagination and curiosity going. So you can go online. You can get a compound interest calculator, but the, the magic of compounding, especially at this, rate's return, when you, this rate of return when you're doing it every month, we're kind of doing it every two weeks now with the weeklies, but um, just, just to make it conservative, 5% a month, here's what your money looks like. So at the end of year one, you've got $11,000 in the account. You're getting $584 per month. So that could go a long ways towards your utility bill. But it starts getting interesting in year, fairly quickly. In year two, you've got $32,000 in the account. You're getting $1,632 per month. This is more money than most people get in Social Security. So at the end of your second year, you're already getting that. And you know what? You don't have to be retired. You don't even have to be close to retirement age. You can do this at the age of 30 or 40 if you want to, and I encourage you to.
At the end of year three, you've got $70,000 in your account. You're getting $3,500 a month. Believe it or not, that's about what you know, the average person makes in a month working. Um, $3,500 is a chunk. At the end of year four, you have over $137,000. You're getting close to $6,900 per month. Now you're getting comfortable. And at the end of year five, you've got over a quarter million dollars in the account. You're getting $12,965. Very close to 13, of course, your next month, you're way over 13, and it can just keep compounding from there. So this is how the math works. It's pretty amazing what happens when you get monthly returns. It's even more amazing what happens when you get returns every two weeks. And with a 90% chance of winning on every trade, you got a really high probability of actually turning this into reality. So that's all pretty impressive, but since you never have to take the money out, it's possible to just keep building it. So what do years five through 10 look like? Now, I, I, you know, I really debated on even whether to show this to you or not because it starts getting pretty crazy. But just for fun, you're gonna probably go out and figure this out on your own anyway. So just for fun, I thought I'd show you the graph. So you're, here's, here's your, your six, you know, you've got 22,000 a month coming in, your eight, 78,000, your nine, 141,000. Can you imagine bringing in this kind of money and bringing it in tax-free? It's kind of mind-boggling. All of a sudden, it wouldn't matter which tax jurisdiction you lived in. It wouldn't matter where you lived. You could go anywhere you wanted. So, you know, these kind of numbers, one of the reasons I hesitated to show them to you is they just get too big. It just gets too mind-boggling. It's just too crazy. But so now, let's just go back to our five-year plan. The next month after your five years is up, you have 272000 in the account, and at just 5%, that amount brings in $13,612 per month tax-free. And that's where I got the title for the webinar. This is just in five years, it's very doable. There's only one problem, and you're probably thinking it right now. We don't live in the calculator world. We live in the real world. And in the real world, we will not get exactly 5% per month every month. Sometimes there will be, there'll be setbacks. Sometimes the market goes crazy. We do the best we can to defend our trades. We're very successful at doing that, but occasionally you'll have a loser. Sometimes we'll do better. And like I say, we've been doing this um, full-time since 2010. Since I took over the service, I used to have somebody else doing it for me. Since I got so fascinating, I had to get in there. And since I took over the service about two and a half years ago, we've been averaging well over 5%. We have the track record to prove that. But I want to just keep the expectations as reasonable as possible. And, you know, there will be fluctuations. This is the stock market. But um, I think this is pretty inspiring. And I also think anybody can do it. The point is, the plan looks like it will work, and it's working right now. So I opened a Roth IRA at Thinkorswim, and if you let them know you have options experience, they'll let you sell credit spreads in the account. And if you decide to come along and do this with me, I'll even set you up with an account at Thinkorswim with the inside track to discounted commissions, and that gives you a huge advantage. So we're doing two trades per week. The first is our usual, more aggressive, higher return credit spread. But our second trade is a Roth retirement trade, and it will be a little lower return, but safer. We'll be shooting for 15 to 20% or better return with a 90% probability of winning. So the two trades can be traded in two separate accounts. That's what a lot of people do. And as you've seen, the buildup can be amazing. So I just want to tell you, there's a lot of good information that's being presented to date, but this is a train you don't want to miss. You want to take 80% of the money that you don't want to actively trade and set it over here and let these things just passively expire on a regular basis. We're getting expirations almost every week now, paydays almost every week, and the deck really is stacked in your favor. So I want you to come along and I want you to join me. So it's super important to me that you're successful with this, so I want to make sure you've got everything you need. I'm going to go over the trading package really quickly um, that I'm going to offer you here today. It's, it's a tremendous amount of information. The first thing you get is a, is a wonderful video presentation on how to trade credit spreads for fun and profit. This just really goes into the basics. You know, if you're not familiar with this strategy, by the end of it, you'll be very comfortable with it. And then I also put together this huge, wonderful, comprehensive package where you'll see how wide of a spread to sell, how much time to sell. This package really goes into the details. You get a 161-page downloadable ebook, complete with color charts, graphs, pictures. You get a 15-chapter video series, 14 separate audio files that you can listen to in your car or on your iPod. You get archived webinars. You'll have access to all new webinars for life. This is a lifetime package. You pay a one-time fee. You'll never have to pay a penny more. And I'm constantly updating it with new information.
Plus, you'll get three videos that show you how to set up automatic orders with our favorite broker for spread trading so you can automate your trade so you know that you're taken care of no matter what. Now, this is the really cool thing. This is the, this is the, the newsletter. This is what I write, the trading letter. You get two new high probability trades every week, and I'll show you exactly where to sell your spreads and exactly how to sell them for the possibility of maximum gains with minimum risk. And I, I, I'll even email you during the week if you need updates. And this is really what you want. This is 97 a month worth every penny of it. People love it. You'll bring in multiples of that on your first trade. Plus, I'm going to give you an extra bonus, 10 module video course specifically on trading the weeklies. This is the most popular thing we've ever produced. People try and buy, itself, buy, buy it by itself all the time. And I'm going to include it in your package. And to make sure you have everything going for you possible, you'll also get a special link to open an account at the best broker in existence for this strategy, and that's Thinkorswim. I'll even get you in touch with our contact at TD Ameritrade so that you can get better commissions than they advertise. So I want you to come on board so we can trade this plan together, invest what you can, and prove to yourself how well this works, and then watch your account build. So to get everything we've talked about and to put your feet firmly on the path toward a generous and secure retirement, this is the URL, and, and if, um, if Chris could just post this for everybody, it's the ultimateretirementstrategy.com. The package alone with all the extras is $780. The subscription is $97 a month, and I'm going to bundle all this together to give you guys just an incredible deal that you just will not be able to refuse. And the reason is, is I want you on board in doing this. This is a strategy that I can really present to people and feel good about it because I know you're going to do well. And I know we're going to be together for a long time. So go to the ultimateretirementstrategy.com. I've got a really nice package there for you. I'm going to put this up there, and I'm going to make it available for you all today and tomorrow. And I want you to get in there and get this package. And I, and I will give you a brand new update Tuesday evening. And you've got all this educational material available to you to really make sure that you're doing this correctly. We're here to help. We'll answer the phones. The gals I hear have answering the phones are extremely bright and they'll be able to help answer your questions as well. And our, our phone number is 877, um, so it's toll free, 507-7878. You can also email customer service at cashflowheaven.com, and you can go to this URL to get started. And I think I'm over my time. I appreciate you being here. It's so exciting. I'm sorry I didn't have a chance to answer questions, but you can email us and call us, and we'll answer any question you have. So thank you, Chris, so much for having me on board. I really want to thank the, the Traders Institute for making this available, and I want to thank you for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Uh, once again, everyone, that is the ultimateretirementstrategy.com. Uh, I just sent it out to everyone via the questionnaire chat box. But if you guys see that, the ultimateretirementstrategy.com. Uh, now, I wanted to you know, go ahead and thank you, Peter, for joining us and presenting us that beautiful presentation.